Ross, do you know what death oil smells like? I do indeed. <laughs> Bloody stinking. I, I was just uh, did it in the uh, change the slipper oil mm. in the C63 last night. I'm surprised you don't smell it in here. We're in my garage. It's a wee bit echoey in here, so bear with us. But uh, yeah, mm. just felt it needed it needed done, and it was it was pretty stinking actually when it came out. So it, uh, it nice done. and dirty and brown. And yeah, yeah, you you changed the diff and the. Yeah, so you when the diff was changed in the N3, I, I obviously had a new diff to go into it. And again, we'd done that there, filled up with the oil, and I had to put some friction modifier in that there into the, the 4.1 diff and just turn it. But yeah, I didn't spill mine everywhere. <laughs> I didn't spin, spill mine uh, anywhere either. But anyway, let's get this started. Welcome to the Soul to Scene podcast. I'm Andy Cooper from RMS Motoring and I'm joined today by Ross Annett. What is happening? We're in my garage so it's uh, you get a wee bit of a reverberation and uh, echo there. Gary is on his halls so it's just us, a crew show as Matt Farah says if you, <laughs> if you ever watch uh, or uh, listening to the Smoking Tire podcast. I We still haven't organised a guest, that's probably our fault rather than anyone else's but Anyway, I've done a few things since uh, last time. So we talked about supercar extravaganza last yes. time. And and you were down at Bishop's Court on the Sunday. That's right. Renis and I decided to um, just come down as guests, as visitors. And it was brilliant. It was great crack. Absolutely. Uh, great day out. The bits you didn't see is we did a... Um, we had an escorted run from Lisbon to uh, the circuit on I Sunday morning. I heard bits about it. That was absolutely... Uh, Great fun, uh, great crack, and it's interesting too getting to know guys who own these sorts of cars. You know, mm-hmm. they're all just just as flipping petrol heads as well as as the rest of us. Yeah, except the 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 metal they wield is just absolutely serious yes, altogether. The, 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 I have to say, even walking around the pits and that there, um, quite a few of them customers, and then with Renis, quite a few of them, uh, he's done photographs for them, hmm. and. The quality of the cars, I have to say, I found this year was much better than last year's. There was a fantastic selection last year, but this year there just seemed to be even more exotic mm-hmm. supercars and hypercars out and being pushed hard around that track. They got a wee bit uh, hamstrung this year. The date they picked and when they, lo- they launched it, it was quite quite late in the year. I think they would give five weeks notice or something like that. And there was there was the JDM show was on mm-hmm. in Belfast the same day and, and stuff like that. So I think that hampered the numbers a bit so hopefully next year they get out in front of the scheduling side of things and um, and even scheduling on, on the day too uh, they know they've changed it to make to make it more um, interesting because a lot of cool stuff at it maybe just didn't get out in the track as yeah. much as uh, we wanted to plus you had to listen to me you were getting you, you were pulling the crowds in Andy I was pulling the crowds in I doubt that I doubt that but no it was what was good though was uh, and in fairness the fact that you were able to speak and talk about the cars that were going around with a bit more kind of knowledge than just the kind of run-of-the-mill radio commentator talking about whatever the else. The blue car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the blue car. <laughs> but no, it was, it was good from, from somebody standing in the pits not being able to see what was happening behind them, whereas you were up in the second or third level of the control tower. Yeah. Seeing a wee bit more and talking about the cars and who was pushing. And again, you probably knew a few of them, um, but the fact that you have a wee bit of knowledge about the cars definitely helped the kind of flow of things. Well, that's interesting because I didn't really have much knowledge. When when I was given the <laughs> list and I was like, Aventador SVJ, is that a V12? Is it normally aspirated? <laughs> How old is it? Is that when... How do you own Lamborghini? You know, uh, it's not right. They're all named after bulls. Like, see, all of I did actually ha- have to do quite a bit of research because the more I looked, I was like, I know bugger all about these things. You know, because all the stuff. You know, there's so many things, two hundred grand plus mm-hmm. that you just don't see every day. No, and you don't get the opportunity to learn it. Right, let's take M threes. Right. Yep. I'm sure everyone's listening to M threes. Uh, like the it's the course of RMS <laughs> or whatever else. But we know a lot about M3s. Uh, they're a lot more affordable than a Ferrari or a Lambo. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but people in RMS are buying them. You do a lot of research. So mm-hmm. you know it has an S55, 3-litre twin turbo, six, uh, straight six, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's 425 horsepower or 450 horsepower if it's competition or whatever yep. else. People will, will, will correct me. But that sort of stuff, 7-speed DCT, 
whereas the later car really came with an eight speed ZF. That's that sort of stuff just rolls off the tongue mm-hmm. for me. Really nerdly and boring. <laughs> but do I know how many uh, speeds the, the Lambos have? You know, no. you know, uh, you know the uh, the V eight Ferrari engines versus V twelve. When did they bring turbocharging in? I, I don't don't know that stuff. And actually, I've forgotten most. I'm trying to remember now. It's like right, a four five eight's normally aspirated, and a four four eight eight's twin is a is turbocharged. And then what stuff's hybrid? Because there's other stuff's hybrid there too. You know, like the MC twenties V six hybrid, the two nine six GTB is V six hybrid, and then and it was. I ended up, I used to the control tower and I had like 20 <laughs> sheets of stuff because I knew some of the cars and I knew some of the drivers and see if there was someone turned up on the day, I hadn't a clue. Yeah, but part of the problem as well though, and, and we've discussed this off the, off the air and stuff like that before, a lot of the new Ferraris are a wee bit mclaren for me, they all kind of blend into each other. You have to really study bits and pieces to see what the difference in some of the newer ones are, whereas the older shapes, you know, and again, they were very much easier to distinguish that you knew what was the 355, the 360, and the 458. You, you knew those kind of cars and the shapes of them very, very distinctly. Even now, when I look at the new Ferraris and that there, I get confused when I look at them. That's not surprising because there was cars there that were like a, uh, it was a Pilotti 488 Pista. Pista. Pista Pilotti, right? Yep. So it's a special edition of a special edition of a special edition of a 488. Yeah. And there, those, there are various reasons why those are special. But to look at from a, from the control tower, mm-hmm. quarter of a mile away, yeah, you know, you need to have the number in the car and look in the sheet and see what the number yeah, that to, is. to see who it is. And, and then refer back. It's the same. Um, Renis was pointing out to me that the difference. So let me get this right. It was that was that the F twelve, the Tour de France model. Mm-hmm. It was. I didn't realize just how exclusive they are when you're talking about the rarest of the rare of the mm-hmm. rare. I think with numbers uh, or, or production numbers, that was by far and away the most rare car that was there that day. Um, and when you see, it's again, it's very subtle, very you know, very subtle changes between the F12 and the F12 TDF. But when you see the changes, it's really obvious. Yeah. But like the changes are 150,000 pounds worth of changes. <laughs> and that's that's the thing. Give me an uh, F80 M3. Mm-hmm. F eighty two M four competition non competition I could tell the difference yeah I could I could probably even have a chance at a CS versus a competition in mm-hmm. something like that. okay it has gold wheels <laughs> <laughs> looks more expensive he's staying away from everyone else because it's twice the price <laughs> the rest of them must be or but even there was a uh, uh, the Alpha Romeo oh, four yes. Figueroa but that was a GT special edition thing as well which is like double the price of the, the regular car that's right and and it's literally when you look at them. It's the paint job, <laughs> you know. Yeah, oh, well, then you see that's where I got. I and I actually it was quite enjoyable spending hours and hours then because you get into right, you know what what did Alfa Romeo change in that car and they're into the right. It's is it cylinder liner liners and a carbon fiber nuts to go with the carbon fiber prop, sha- prop shaft or Mad. you know mm-hmm. the detail that the manufacturers went into to, to throw the money at it now. At the same time, for uh, for you and me. The ordinary car would be absolutely fine, but for the collectors out there who yeah. can afford to have something um, special, there was a Causey there. Yes, I love seeing the yep. the uh, the Causey was it's things like that too, which which appealed to us mm-hmm. as well as uh, Alfa Romeo Four C. Actually, it's a beautiful car. And you get so down a whole rabbit hole one evening, and then reading about you know, reading down right such and such has this such and such Alfa. Oh, I remember the Alfa, and I remember when they came out. Remember that seeing them at uh, oh Geneva or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, it had a carbon fibre tub, which was totally exclusive was, to the supercars yeah. at the time. And the four-cylinder 1.7 wasn't that well received, but a beautiful uh, looking wee car. So, yeah, I found that whole process uh, frustrating and fascinating because I felt totally, uh, I felt prepared and I was doing a lot of mm-hmm. research. But then I was also felt like if this was a pit, uh, pits full of M3s, mm-hmm. And a C63 marks yep. and Lotus Amiras and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. that uh, is more um, our sort of fair. And, and, and I would have been. I would have been. T- and even Porsches. Yeah. You, you know, you could have picked out the Porsches because they were. You know, you, again, it's quite easy to tell the difference between a 996, 997 shape and to between whatever else, and then the, the kind of different special editions well, because they're easier identified. Now, I know more about that because I have one, yes. and I think if I had. 
if I was ever lucky in the position, lucky enough to have a Ferrari or something like that, mm-hmm. then I would start to know. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm sure that there's a few Ferraris in RMS now, and I bet you those guys have a lot more oh. depth of knowledge than they had yeah. two or three years ago when they didn't have those types of cars. And it's just, it's what you drive, isn't it? I bet you know a lot about uh, about vans. About we, just, we four Transit Connect vans. I'm just, just looking at your Transit Connect here. I do, because again, when it came time to research what I was looking for, I knew what I wanted, and knew specs, and knew everything else, and I knew the comparisons between it and the different wee vans. And because you're sitting in the auto trader going, ah, that yeah. one doesn't have the uh, third vent in the front because that's a <laughs> that's a earlier model year yeah, and all the rest. And, the and the that, M Sport that, and the MSRTs. Ah, and, yeah, 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 that's when Ford spent proper money on them, and then they got cheap after yeah, that. They, and all they, the rest. they definitely need to spend some more money again on them. Um, talking about the day, so obviously there was two kind of big mega Porsche 911 the GT3 RS isn't that there did you see the, the yellow 992 the yellow 992 oh that is just on, nine, the yellow 992 RS it's it's uh, it's on RMS but we'll, we'll post it in the show notes the but, wing on that thing was just so it has the swan neck wing yeah with the active aero so you have you've um, two pistons to control the wing and then I think if you give it full brakes on the track and all that it will, it it will go vertical up, yeah. yeah like a like just like a race car but it is a race car it, well it's a full on race car but, and this is going to be interesting, and I know, again, we, we did speak about this in one of the previous um, podcasts we've done. It's terrible repeating from, ourselves. From your position in the control tower, mm-hmm. do, you, do you understand now how quiet some of these cars are when they're going past? So they're doing the pops and the bangs when they're sitting in the, in the pits. Yeah. But when they're at full chat going down the street, they're so muted compared to older cars. That's just regulation system. I know, but it, the... the the best sounding car of the day for me, there was an older white GT3. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whether he had a custom exhaust or whether there was something done to it, but you could hear it properly. And it wasn't like so loud and obnoxious. Yeah. It just sounded fantastic, so it did. Yeah. But although I bet you inside those cars, they've done a lot of work to try and make them sound good, even though it's, you know, augment, you know, about, you know about augmented <laughs> sound. You would, you would be an expert in that department. You, you heard the V8. <laughs> So, MSRT, the, the 1.5 diesel V8 coming down. So the, the diesel V8 came down, and then I rolled the C63 out of the out of the guys to so yeah. hear a proper V8. So there, like. there was a bit of willy waving. <laughs> a state car for the win. But yeah, uh, so uh, it was an interesting day in uh, meeting the owners. Uh, fantastic because full of fascinating people. Mm-hmm. Really into the into the kit they have too. Yeah, and we talk, you know, and have that depth of knowledge about supercars. That I just felt, I felt woefully under under prepared for, uh, and I did feel I had to do a lot of research into, and I was still had the sheet of paper and saying, right, yeah, this is a Ferraro, Lambo, whatever, built in, yeah, wherever, you know, to make it sound like I knew what I was talking about. But I did do the research, but I did have a script in well, front of me to keep myself right as well. Did it, what was your script when? And you have to give props to Mark King. Literally, like it was a uh, he took his two um, Bentleys. One was the GT3, mm-hmm. and the other was the brand new. It's and I'm going to say again, was it? Um, uh, you're going to ask me now to look up my uh, go, go my ask, notes. But Mark with two really really limited edition Continentals, and, and, and I probably said something very uh, dismissive to it. Giving them full stacks around the track Which with no fear. That's amazing, and just. Going for it, and I said, and, and it's I, not just like a normal Continental GT. It's uh, well, obviously, it's GT3 one, which is the older shape, and then the new one, which is the end of line because Bentley have decided because it's the it's the last of the W12 engines, so they're going out with um, going out with a huge bang. I'm just looking here to see. I don't know if, if Mark was on my list, and that's where I got stuck. So Probably, he was yeah. maybe out, and I was like, oh, fuck. He wasn't on the list, so but there was a there was a Continental GT. Uh, it was a guy called Tom, but uh, you know uh, that was um, I think Tom's with that Apex North crowd, and his might be I think it's the matte black one. Yeah, yeah, real nice machine. Yeah, um, uh, Mark Easton, photographer. Yeah, and his seven twenty S was uh, beautiful. Uh, was chatting to that was nice too. Was chatting down, chatting to the guys coming into the pits. Mm-hmm. I remember chatting to Mark. Sweat was lashing off. Like <laughs> he was just giving it uh, everything fair. Yeah. Fair play. That's, the guy's right. Just how, doing things that they would never normally do in the car in a relatively safe in a re- environment. Yep. And uh, obviously, then were you commentating when Tony went out and I believe set it was a new lap record. Un- unofficial, was it? unofficial lap unofficial. record. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so 
I think uh, Tony was a couple of seconds quicker than what the bikes were doing around the track. The lap, the lap record was really very, very quick. Mental. Yeah, so no, I was chatting to uh, Tony in his, in his Delara. So. He's, uh, do you know what I actually love about Tony? And again, he, he took me out in, when he had the Ariel Atom that there. Mm-hmm. And do you remember he had the, it was the E30 with the S2000 engine on it? Yep. And he used to put up the, the in-car footage that there. The thing I've loved about Tony, and I don't think he's changed too much, is he's always drive like a joyrider. Oh. <laughs> he's given full beans, full commitment, and the man has no fear whatsoever. It's um, he, he drives like his life depends on it. Yeah. He is just absolutely uh, foot to the back of the head. Like. Yeah. And fair play to him. Yeah. So, look... Oh, the, the, the other one as well, I had a laugh, so uh, Renis and I were talking about it. Ryan Donnelly, uh, Donnelly Automotive up the road. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan, they took a fleet of cars down. They did, yeah. Amazing cars. Everybody <laughs> everybody else is kind of like going, you know, in their you know, race suits or whatever else they're doing, and, and everybody, you know, in their trainers and whatever else. Ryan's wearing, <laughs> you know, this tailored white shirt, lovely pair of jeans or whatever else, and his brogues, <laughs> and he's out giving it. Absolutely fucking everything. <laughs> no fear in that man whatsoever. Yep. And he comes in and Renis is looking at him going, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, it was, it was just mental how, how he just goes and takes it all in stride and comes back in as if he's... I don't, I don't get wearing the race suit to that yeah. type of, that's, that's a bit OTT, but here, whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your boat. If it gets you out, gets you out in the track and have a bit of crack. And I still haven't got the total raised. For the air ambulance yet, I've asked the question, so I'm I'm uh, I'm waiting to see. Waiting to hear back from the guys. Yeah, but no, it, it was uh, I think until rain stopped play at two o'clock. But it was a fantastic day. It was really well organised. It was great to be there, see it and do it. Uh, it was great to see people going out and enjoying it. And obviously the passenger runs, and then of course the helicopter coming in as well brought loads of people around to see it. So. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, other things that I've been at since then. Uh, Glad to be in a plaid. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. So uh, Tesla Belfast did a day mm. up at Nuts Corner Motorsport Centre and they had a, a Model S left hooker, mm-hmm. left hand drive Model S plaid. So what are they? Just, over, just a shade over a thousand brake. Yep. The 60 and 1.99 with the rollout. What is the deal with the rollout on the drag racing? Is it like a three foot, three foot rollout? Something, like, something, something yeah. It, it's, it's, but that's something like the American way to do it because when you're dry launching, you know, you're losing that first couple of milliseconds on it. So the rollout allows you to apparently do a real. I, I can't get my head around it. It's like complete bollocks to yeah. me. Like. It's just, <laughs> it's where he's getting his 1.9. Oh, that's where gets his 1.99. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that, so we were, uh, I was up with Mark uh, from EVA and I oh, yeah. on the podcast before. And, uh, we hopped in, so we were we were three up in the uh, Model S. I wasn't driving. Mark or David, one of the guys from Tesla, was driving. And uh, first of all, one thing I noticed straight away: that yoke, terrible. Mm-hmm. I I was watching Mark try to feed it through his hands as he was going through the corners. And I'm like, now if the rack in the Model S is anything like a Model Three rack, very quick, mm-hmm. so it doesn't take much steering input. So. But that can be a bad thing when you're steering something that's quite awkward. It's not yeah. something you can do hand over hand very easily. Or, like, if you lose the back end and you need to let go and grab the steering wheel, you just miss it. Yeah. So for oversteer opportunity, which I may or may not be ever <laughs> interested in such a thing, uh, as, as your poster on the wall of your... That's the S14. S14, yeah. S14 full, full, full sideways, smoke everywhere, so no. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I... Uh, Thought that was my first thought. I and the second thought was beautifully finished, mm-hmm. real step up in interior quality. So sort of, um, there was a mixture of like nice Alcantara panels and the door panels, okay. uh, mood lighting, and that sort of stuff. Uh, center screen is well. I think this is all the mod- new Model S's are the same anyway. So center screen is landscape like the Model Three. Oh, okay, <clears throat> so they switched it, but it also uh, tilts as well. Very so good. You know, tilt towards the yep. driver and stuff like that. <clears throat> but pain in the but the driver's on the wrong side of the road. Mm-hmm. I think Tesla will give you a litter ticker, so you can. <laughs> and you're like, why? So you can do, yeah, exactly. You're, you're do, the Ross is doing car the, park button thing. Ross doing his YMCA here, doing the, car, doing the yeah. car park. Yeah, yeah, doing the car park. Wow, tickets. that's nuts. Yeah, but um, that still makes it an absolute pain in the bollocks. Now they can say, well, 
actually for overtaking get the cameras on the screen which can maybe help mm-hmm. too and in fairness I dr- did a few miles in Pete Venom on our mm-hmm. I did a few miles in his left hand drive Camaro the big Camaro yep and it wasn't too bad especially if you had a passenger because you were like can I go you can go when yep. you go plenty of poke so that that's no problem but uh, I don't know it's just it's it's a, a lot of money now Getting to the most important part. Yes, so we did. Forget about mood lighting. And that, that, I, that's not what nobody's interested in. The we, we did seven, eight launches in this thing. like, And I had a sore face. Like, well, you know what a, the Model 3 performance mm-hmm. is like anyway. Yeah. And it's just that, but much more. To the point, it was, it was just... Uh, they were saying actually a lot of times when they're demoing the Model S, they have to rotate drivers because some of the drivers just get headaches and stuff like that. Because people want to have the the feeling, so you're just doing launches, launch, launch, Constant launch. launches. I, I felt when Pete, the, my first ever time out in Pete's um, Model Three performance, he done three or four launches in a row, mm-hmm. and I genuinely I felt ill after it because it was like I just wasn't prepared for it. Yeah, and and you can understand, you know, so where he was kind of used to it, but I did hear that you know that that people do get feeling sick. I was starting to almost brace myself for it coming. You know, because you're like, you know, my, I felt my, myself tensing. Because you, yeah. you get very tense when it's oh, happening. I thought, but you said it, you, <laughs> <laughs> I, looked at you, I thought you said you were bracing yourself for coming. And I was like, <laughs> I know they were good, but <laughs> I didn't realize they were that good. <laughs> for it coming, that's what you're saying. <laughs> for here, the acceleration. Here, here are the Tesla pleathers. It's uh, easily white plane. White right plane. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> this is, when this I when I watched myself first rated R <laughs> when, I, when I watched myself down, uh, went for a cold shower after that. But no, the so the acceleration is just fantastic, and otherwise it's completely you know there's no real compromise. If it was a right hand drive car, they're a very good looking car. Those mm-hmm. new Model S is far I, I, far better looking than the Model yeah. Three. Yeah, and. Uh, and I, and I think if it was only right-hand drive, it's just not happening. It's just a crying shame. It, it comes back, though, to the issue. And even when you're looking at the performance models and that there, that kind of acceleration, I'm not even saying in the wrong hands, but that kind of acceleration from somebody who's maybe not prepared for it, not ready for it, whose foot slips, and these two-ton of heavy metal launches like mm-hmm. it's... I, I I still think that there's a real danger coming in this year, where, you know, I guess they've been saying it for years, but it's this instant acceleration with, you know, no tires lighting up, no nothing else. It's just that instant go. I think it's class. Well, you you're worried about someone just getting in the middle east and just fucking <laughs> smoking everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, at a drag day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just like like more like you're uh, you're talking about mowing down flipping schools it's worth of children e- or something like things. that. And How many times have you been pulling out in the road and, and let's say you're, you're at the end of the road and you're looking left, you're looking right to make sure there's nothing coming. There's a car in front of you and you nearly jump because you've, you've assumed that they're going to, you know, the car in front of you has Their lights have went off and they're actually putting the handbrake on rather than moving off. Yeah. The road's empty in or front of them and they're, they're asleep. Putling it around and, and something like that there where, you know, the, the real kind of thing is how quick you can launch out of uh, you know, a junction or whatever else. That's where, I, and, and it's not just like, you know, five or 10 miles an hour bump. In 30 foot, those things will have accelerated to 40 or 50 miles an hour. Well, it's hard to tell because that's all roll out. Yeah, know. well, that's roll out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a grey area. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you're thinking you're going to just push people out. I've just pushed a yeah. uh, 25 ton lorry out on the road here yeah, with an electric car. Two ton of electric going very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know. Well, do you know what? It's. It's their only party piece. Yeah. The, the, the Rimac Nevera has just set the new uh, Nurburgring record for uh, production EV. Is it around seven minutes or something like that? It's 20 seconds faster than the Model S Plaid. Wow. But for the Model S Plaid to get that close to a Rimac Nevera is yes, also incredibly impressive. A tenth of the price. Well, Rimac, how much is Nevera? Are they a couple, million? A couple of million, two million, something, something isn't like it? That, fuck me. So, so yeah, a tenth. 20th of the price. What about, were, were the Tesla test guys, you know, have they got orders for them? Or was it really just having it over to show? They do apparently have orders, but I think it's in the single numbers. Okay. You know, so, but uh, that, that's like a halo car at mm-hmm. the same time. It's to get people through the door. Yeah. So, uh, 
Which it will, because they had all the other stuff. They had Model 3s and Model mm-hmm. Ys, Model Xs. Which I see very few Model Xs out, but they're, they're just a mad thing, like, with the, yeah. the mental doors. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, it's a gateway drug, get, but actually get someone into a Model 3 standard range or something like that. And really, if you're getting, if you are out in the plaid, but you're getting into a Model 3, a Bogo Model 3, it still has the big screen. Mm-hmm. It still has 16... 5.4 mm-hmm. seconds and has that it has that whole Tesla architecture that yep. feels like it's from a 50s B movie or in the future or, or whatever else gives people all that so it was quite smart I think the only thing about that day was it wasn't very well publicised so it was the, it was quite empty Was that intentional or you know I just I just think it was uh, again uh not telling people enough in enough yeah. uh, time, you know, yeah. and uh, not enough marketing and all the rest. Those, if you, because it, it's the same. Do you remember? I haven't seen it in a while, but McLaren used to take a fleet of cars over land at the Culloden, Culloden, yeah, yeah. And it was one of those ones, you know, if you know, you know, and ah. if you don't, was it Parks and Edinburgh or something yeah. like that? that it, don't turn it? up. Yeah. Um, you know, because again, not every tire kicker is coming around to pick up a McLaren, but but a McLaren day is for more exclusive clientele like I yes. understand you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna cherry pick people for that whereas yeah. Tesla like everyone should go kids you know bring your kids yeah. it's, it's like uh, uh, going to the supercar Sunday. bring bring your kids with you and then they'll suddenly want to go out on uh, on track or you know make you go and buy a supercar it, it's <laughs> have you been reading um, Pete's thread in RMS where it, he's coming close to the end of his Tesla time and I think his overwhelming um, kind of things that he's talking about is He's loved the car. It's been the perfect everyday car for him. He can't think of anything better. When you say overwhelming, there's only one word I'm thinking <laughs> of, and that's depreciation. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was one of the deciding factors or defining factors of, of why he's decided that, okay, time has came. So as opposed to, to refinance or anything, it's time for it to go because the depreciation has just been shocking where it shouldn't have been. Well, that's where really... And this is a benefit of hindsight. So it's uh, I don't totally understand the time he bought his Model Three a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Sorry for talking about about you, but, but we're not. It's not. It's hardly behind your back. It's on a public podcast. But bear with me. When he bought that car, residuals in general for EVs were rock, rock solid, mm-hmm. and in Tesla in particular, where you know you bought something like that, and the price was the price. Yep. Then COVID happened. Then supply chain issues happened. Then. Uh, Tesla got ahead of the supply chain issues. Mm-hmm. Then uh, I was reading uh, recently, just because I read boring shit like that, that uh, uh, the demand for EVs actually is still increasing at the moment by uh, 25% quarter on quarter. However, the supply of EVs is outstripping demand by four times. So more people want EVs, but there's four times as much EVs being produced. Wow. So... Uh, that's not helping residuals at no. all. So that's why, well, when I looked at the uh, Banner IPS, mm-hmm. it lost 40% of its value last year in one year. So I, so I, uh, Motorway, the Motorway website has a great uh, graph, if you're really into the stats, which will plot your sort of we buy any car type values over mm-hmm. even put a reg in, get something you like. Model 3 was, I, I did a few examples in RMS, but put Model 3 in. You'll see the graph, Model 3 performance, and it came out, they came out at 60, 55 grand, they came mm-hmm. out at, and they're sort of <clears> hovering around the 55, and then glacially over a couple of years, it dropped down to like high 40s, and then about six months ago, just like fell off a cliff edge, yeah. and you can now buy them for 20 at 29,000, which is a, a hell of a car for the money. It's an unreal car for the money. Just you wait till the Project Highland Model 3 comes out next year, and the Teslas could take another... On the second hands, and I actually mentioned this in our RMS today. If next year you could buy a 2020, like a four year old Model 3 standard range for 15 grand, that is a great family car. If I, and that I can't see any reason why now, yeah, that wouldn't be the case you know, with 40 or 50 thousand miles yeah. on or something like that. And that's a lot more affordable too, because absolutely, the <clears throat> it, puts, it puts that kind of motoring into a much more affordable target bracket, target bracket, and then. That kind of like fifteen grand that's putting you in a car that's effectively free driving because the even though you are going to be paying to charge it at that stage, yeah, it's still going to be a hell of a lot cheaper than you. Know, no matter what way we look at 
petrol, diesel, whatever else, all the man maths in the world does not make up for the difference between how cheap electric driving can be. And if you wanted to buy something, uh, and I thought I'd started to stay off the trade, auto trader after the <laughs> vehicle sort of out this year. However, I can't stay away because I have a. We all have a problem. But uh, if you want to spend fifteen grand now on an electric car for the family, uh, Kona Electric, fifteen grand will buy a twenty nineteen with fifty k on it, something like that. A wee bit more will get you one with sixty four kilowatt hour battery. It'll do two hundred eighty miles, mm-hmm. you know, and that's. That's probably, uh, as far as the whole Venn diagrams crossover, sort of electric yeah. running costs, value, still has a bit of warranty left and mm-hmm. bits and pieces. Um, they're, a, they're a fantastic wee car. Yeah, you know, and again, we all talk about the range of, of EVs in that there, but how many of us need a 300 mile range for an EV for every day? I would imagine there's very, very few need it. I thought, re- reading uh, the, the stats as well, that... I was going to be told, no, people are getting turned off EVs mm-hmm. because of the price. The arse is falling out of the price. Yep. But, but but it's not the case, people's... Or the price of electric. Or uh, the other thing is the price of finance. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know, so you're... Was it 8 or 9% now? 8.9, but yep. uh, for a second-hand Tesla, there's some 0%. You can get a 0% new Model 3. You can get 0% on an MG EV4. Okay. Which... Um, an MG EV4, the, the base car, I think you put nine grand down, £140 a month for a couple of years. Wow. Cheap motor. That's cheap motor. They're, and they're, I, haven't, I haven't got one yet to test, and so I have no time to do it, but uh, apparently a great wee car. Wow. But EV suck. So, um, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, but I don't think there'll be many EVs going to Anglesey this weekend. So, the, so there's a pile of guys going for an RMS track day. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely devastated. Anglesey is. Fantastic. If if you're thinking about going, I think there's probably you probably sneak in the passenger seat somewhere with these guys. I think they're going on. They're taking the ferry over from Take Dublin ferry, on, yeah. on Saturday, and then track day Sunday, and then home Sunday evening into into Monday. Um, I've got to go to a wedding, so I can't go, which is frankly devastating because it's just an absolutely amazing. It looks like circuit. it's going to be fun, and there's again there's a there's a very different mix of cars going to it, and it looks like it's. I think the guys are just going to have a laugh. They're going to have yeah. a wee bit of fun. Ah, totally. Well, like that's what that's what RMS is about, and it's great. There's uh, a great uh, selection of stuff. Going yeah, and, and again, you know, we're talking about RMS here, but this is guys who have met each other through RMS predominantly. You know, mm-hmm. there's 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 that many different people going. Some of them knew each other before, but it's just it's really good to see that something like that there does happen, where it's just like like minded guys just saying, "All right, let's, let's go for do this." Yeah, I know. So no, I'm uh, kind of. Uh, Jealous and devastated. <laughs> so I am. Would you ever do anything like that, would you? I would love to. My issue, though, is, you know, I've got three kids under the age of, like, 12, and there's that many different things going on for them that yeah. even even with a weekend with one or two of them don't have stuff on, there's there's that many other things going on. So, unfortunately, my days of that there, I've got another few years to wait before I can go and do things. Oh, tell me about it. So it's uh, the, the, the struggle is real, but here, the car will be in the truck garage for... Next time, Ross, as long mm-hmm. as the M3, you don't, you're not brushing it away after... Absolutely, no, they... <laughs> <laughs> a couple of years. Um, it's not the only thing that's happening as well. Uh, hopefully stuff we'll get to. Uh, Blackwater Graphics have a barbecue. Yes. So, hoping to get down to that. It is, I think, around first week of first September. September. Yes, yeah, the first weekend. I think it's the first of September, actually. It's that first weekend. And a couple of weeks later, Deutsch Collective, which uh, down at Scarva House, yep. which... Can't wait. Cracker. Happen. Yeah. It was brilliant last year. I think I popped down in the um, in the Yaris. You are in the Yaris? My, well, my Yaris has popped back up in RMS again. Oh, has it? Someone's taken it as a trade-in. No, I didn't see that. No. Uh, yeah, so it just popped up the other the other day. So there's a great great car for someone. I think uh, whoever he grabbed it for the trade-in has brought it home and just absolutely uh, <laughs> loves it, which which is which is no surprise. Um, but yes, yeah, so I took the Yaris to Deutsche Collective last year, so I'm hoping to get down in the uh, Lotus, even, down just the Lotus. To, even just to spectate mm-hmm. and uh, see what's going on. It's, uh, those guys can do it. We, yeah, can't, we can't say any more about the Do The Best shows. You just have to go. Yeah, you just have to go and do it. And, and again, for anybody who hasn't done the Deutsche Collective that there, um, don't think about them like it's just because of the Dubshed guys and it's going to be another Dubshed show. It's, it's about as far removed from that as it could be. Mm-hmm. It's just a really nice, relaxed environment. Just... Cool guys, car enthusiasts, cool girls, 
chatting shit about cars and going around and looking at each other's and and just it's so cool. So yeah, just go and do it. You sell that at no doubt. Uh, no, do you know something they they've said about it? But I kind of like sometimes just going to a show as a guest. Yeah, you know, just switching off from that. You know, sell, sell, sell. You know, it, there's something. Again, I, I love being at the shows where you can't sell stuff because. But nine times out of ten, I've got Renan or Pete or somebody shouting at me because I'm talking shit to customers and just having a laugh and doing things. So that's why I really love going to the likes of those things to enjoy it as a as a, um, just as a guest. I remember, oh, 15 years ago, easily, I absolutely sickened myself with shows because back then, you know, yeah, single and, and all the rest and just had loads of time. And you just, you just went to everything. And it got to the stage where everything felt the same. Mm-hmm. And, and then I didn't do any. I, yeah. I, I pretty much stopped going to shows and then I started doing... I, did, I just was like, I want to do stuff that I actually want to do. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was going through the motions and start doing... That's when I started doing track days and drifting and, 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 drifting and then And then... Um, and then uh, more recently, um, I certainly do all the like dub shed and stuff yeah. like that. But I would be fairly picky about what I, what I go to yeah. and what I don't. Partially for time reasons, like yourself, mm-hmm. family. So, so you want to spend your time uh, at the things you do enjoy, and then I and then I sort of found well, I'd second myself. So then I was like, I had this negative association yep. with with it, and then started going back, and then really enjoyed it. I think I said in the last podcast about uh, being at Eurotreffen and standing uh, running running a quick detailer over yeah. the something <laughs> like that, and and just thinking like you know, I remember this brings back the memories, but it's actually. You know, it seems like a, you can look at it as a hardship. You have to get up early. You have to get the car ready. You've, you've stressed to get mm-hmm. everything else sorted out. And I'm sure there's people doing builds and all the rest. And, you know, they've, they've been working for weeks and months. And you hear the stress people go through to get things ready. Just to get ready for it. And But you have to remember when you're there, you're with your mates. Even if you don't know the guy you're standing beside yep. or anything like that, you know, uh, and there's people coming up, and, up to you and asking questions. Oh, I haven't seen such and such. In the, and this always happens. And like... Because I'm terrible with names and all the rest, and like, uh, but I say, like, oh, or or someone you haven't talked to talked to in years, and then you you just pick up where you left off. Yep, every there's, time there's something that's just really you know it's again you know, and we're talking about selling and stuff like that there. So at Dubshed, there was a couple of guys from Scotland, quite a few people from Scotland came over. Um, two guys in lovely RS4s were right beside me in the stall. We got chatting to them, we got talking to them. You know, we helped them set up, we helped them do different things. Um, they were using another brand of product and they <laughs> ran out of something, they came over to me and it's just, you know, I was saying, well, boys, look, I'm not talking shit, but take this here and try it. And then suddenly from that there, it turns into these guys are checking in with you on Instagram and stuff like that, asking you how things were. They're opening up things here. Listen, Ross, there's any chance you can send me over bits and pieces there. And it, it turns into something more than, than, than what it was at the start. And, and that's kind of what I love about just those shows and, and meeting people at it because there's not many dicks at it. And if there are, they get sort of recognised and called out very quickly. Um, the, the people, the friendliness and, and everybody's kind of willingness to engage with everybody else. It, it's just, I think, I think there's, it's just really nice to, to go to something that... You always talk, love about, talking about how lovely everyone is. Yeah. You know, we really talk about, uh, like, like me, for example, I'm, <laughs> I'm about to be an arsehole, right? Go for it. But uh, you were saying about, you know, you had all these, uh, these products. You rebranded recently. I did. From Anakem to Akem. But I, I, but I had another suggestion for you. <laughs> and this, this, is the, this is the stuff you put in the book. Yanni Kem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing but yeah, it, it's, it's things like that. Yeah, Yanni, you don't get yourself into Halfords like the, yeah, Yanni did. <laughs> like Yanni did. Uh, Yanni's in everything. Yanni's in Carwow. He's in Halfords. He's in. But actually, do you know something? And here's here's something about him. So whilst he has that kind of dick persona about things, there was something popped up on Instagram or something not that long ago. And I actually I don't comment on things a whole lot on it unless it's you know unless it's something I know. And I think I wrote a comment. Uh, Yanni had put up something where he he sponsors these things for um, for sick kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is like putting a real down on things. I, I saw this actually. He yeah, saw this yeah. here where he had this wee kid down and this, this wee boy wasn't well and he had him down and he took him on the things and showed him the cars and whatever else and had the wee guys and the wee girls wrapping cars and doing bits and pieces and, and having a laugh with them. Unfortunately, the child passed away and the child wanted Yanni to wrap the coffin. Yes, and I saw the coffin, yes. 
he broke down and, and I don't know whether it's me getting older and softer or maybe it's just because I'm a father myself. I fucking cried, man, when mm-hmm. I saw this here. And I, and I, I literally wrote on it and it goes, do you know something, man? I've got a newfound respect for you. So, again... That's why I saw it, because you'd commented on it and I think I'd, I had yeah, seen you Yeah, it could be that there, because yeah, yeah. I just had a newfound respect for him. So, so it, like, he wrapped this kid's cough and, like, like imagine doing something like that there. Um, That's unbelievable. Yeah, so even though he has the dick persona and everything oh, like no, that I, there. I, I don't actually think he's a dick persona. I no. think he's, he's, uh, that's just me being a dick. I, 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 I do like him. Yannick him. I'm going to change your name <laughs> and all the rest of I should, I should actually hit him ta- tap him up. <laughs> do, do a collab. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but actually, talking about collabs, again, that's one of the things that, that's really cool that, you know, when you're seeing the likes of, of the clothing companies and the garment companies and, and, and well, I'll say it now, like um, me and Andy at Blackwater, I'm going to try and do something because I've had so many people ask me about, you know, hoodies and stuff like that there. Mm-hmm. And of course I want to do it. But I think it'd be really boring to have like egg ham in a hoodie. So I've said to, to Andy at Blackwater, okay, let's come up with something and, mm-hmm. you know, co-brand it. Let's do something together because what's better than doing something than if you can involve your friends with it? Uh, certainly. Certainly. It goes for everything. Racing, weekends away in Anglesey. 100%. Merch. <laughs> Uh, Making money. <laughs> Here, paying the bills. RMS sponsorship. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. uh, well, that's one thing I'm terrible at, I know, but uh, and and terrible at the. I've I've tried to do the whole merchandise thing, but see all that stuff. It's it's just not in me. It's time and though, Andy. It's, it, it, it's time. But I also cringe a bit. Mm. I cringe. I cringe when I see influencers. I cringe when I see stuff being forced down my throat yeah. and all the rest of nuts. Probably to RMS's detriment that I don't, you know, I, I just like RMS being RMS for us. Yes. Leave us alone and let us let do. Us you know do something? It. That, that is kind of one of the things that, that it's almost like a boys' club, but it's not like a boys' club, if you know what I mean. You know, it's too big to be, you know, just like, and I know that there's, oh, fuck it, I'm going to be an asshole now as well. There's the dicks, and there are always dicks going, oh, they're thin, they're circle of RMS. And you go, like, fuck off, it's not in a circle. Just because there's, a crowd of us who know who have known each other for longer mm-hmm. that doesn't make it in a circle that doesn't mean that you're not part of the group or the collective mm-hmm. but you know you're not going to rock up at a family wedding and go and sit at some table who you don't know and start calling them dicks because they're not involved in, in conversations that have nothing to do with you and, right. and it's one of those things that, that like it probably it bugs me probably more than it should you probably are quite impervious at all but you know that's that's one of the cool things about like RMS is still one of the very few forums that are going there's a really good atmosphere on it, and there's good groups of friends within groups. It's a crying shame there's not more forums about, because uh, when I, again, doing the car research, not you're not only looking at auto trader, but you're like, well, what mods can I do? We always love mods. Yeah. So you're like, forums used to be the first place to go. There's still some great forums out there. Um, Lotus, some Lotus, good Lotus ones and stuff. There's not very, very many good Porsche forums. You have to go with like Renlist or the Porsche Club GB. Mm-hmm. Um, but... There's just not that same depth of information that there there used to be, and that's what you want when you buy a car. You want to know what are the common faults. I have this rattle. How do you fix it? Uh, how, how do you change the the diff oil in my C sixty three? Yeah, you know that sort of stuff. And um, in fact, the C sixty three, I struggle to find uh, a lot of information. I find a lot more information about the previous model, and I think that's because it was in the sort of early 2010s and late 2000s when there were a lot of people on the forums but now it's sort of buried in Facebook groups and if you're not on the group you'll not find it in Google no you know so you uh, so you just don't find that um, information like that's why people go to Piston Heads or mm-hmm. God help us all Mum's Net you know, or, <laughs> you know or, but, or the Money Saving Expert forums yep. or all those big forums because there's just a wealth of it's a of wealth of knowledge out there that, that people have sharing yeah, and I would hope if someone has, right, I've got a flipping ticket from Smart Park and what do I do? I, uh, where in Cookstown has a charger? Where in, you yep. know, those sorts of questions, mm-hmm. those have probably have been answered a million times in RMS. You know, no doubt. Who's good locally to ensure an X? Who's, mm-hmm. you know, all that sort of stuff. And that's, uh, and as well, it's not even having that historical stuff. It's having people there who want to help each other. And mm-hmm. Here's the answer. I have a part for that. I know a guy... Ring such and such. It's terrible at the moment. Try to get a mechanic at the moment. You know, somebody said that to me. Trying to get a mechanic to work on things is is a nightmare. And it's the it's the usual story. People go, oh, "There's enough work out there," but there might be enough work out there, but there's not enough people out there to do the work. 
and there's not there's not the people going into the jobs as no. well. Um, in fact, uh, one of the things uh, I always remember uh, Coog telling me about the course he did at the um, CERT or somewhere in the colleges mm-hmm. about the you know you can do the mechanical course. And I was like, oh, that sounds class, and I never did it, and I wish and I don't have the time to do it now. Yeah. But uh, I know that, uh, and that was people just doing it in their spare time and mm-hmm. evenings and stuff, and just wanting to, wanting to learn for the sake of learning. But they're not getting the new. The, the intakes and that the there. intake, you know, to look to look yeah. af, after petrol cars, which were blah 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 EV this EV that, but out of the cars sitting right us here, and there's only one EV, and the rest uh-huh. are all internal combustion, and, but, and you may know, need someone who can, uh, you know, do suspension or do X, Y, and Z that certainly I wouldn't want to do. You know, you know, uh, I think as well part of part of. Maybe the the lack of, of willingness of people come forward to do like mechanic and courses and stuff like that is all this kind of scare tactics and bullshit talk about come twenty thirty there'll be no more ICE engines there'll be no nothing else. But how many cars still like when you look at a classic car club day, cars from the forties, fifties, sixties mm-hmm. that are still out there driving around? You know, it's not like in seven or eight years time, petrol cars are going to disappear. Well, it's actually going to be something that will demand a premium. I yeah, agree one hundred percent. I think this is where somebody who really knows what they're doing, and you know, okay. So if if we look at, I think two things are going to happen. I what I what I believe is that the kind of more specialist cars, the performance cars are 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 sorry. Let me say, our performance cars mm-hmm. uh, of this generation are going to need people with hands on experience. Yeah. That just isn't there. You know, uh, you can remember uh, there was a guy, all the rally guys just talked about Winston Henry outside mm-hmm. Refrain, or not Refrain, sorry. He was Margaret Hill Direction. Mm-hmm. And he was just this old school mechanic mm-hmm. who just knew Mark II's inside out mm-hmm. and could diagnose him from listening to him and mm-hmm. just, just knew stuff that other people didn't do. And he could diagnose what was wrong with somebody's car, if it was pink and if it was doing X, Y, Z, by looking at or smelling or doing it. He's just worked with them that many years. And that kind of level of, of knowledge. and Like, look at, look at um, RX-7s. Mm-hmm. How few people can work on them. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. You know, what, what is a performance car? But it's completely specialist. So that now if you've got an RX-7 and he's worked on it, in Ireland you've got about three places you can go to. Yeah. So I, I think this is where people kind of need to see that if they develop the skills now, and, and if young fellas or young girls have got time to go to college or techs and learn these mechanic and skills and apply it to specialist cars, yeah, they can command what they want in years to come. And here's the thing to take that thought process forward. It could be someone who we could be quite easily slag off. He has a flipping reeked out Bora <laughs> doing the port on a, on a 17 on, mm-hmm. a, on a Saturday night in 10 years' time. Could be one of the only handful of mechanics left in such and such area. Yep. You know, we uh, we need people to get it, be in, be in the cars yeah. and, and uh, love them the way we do, which is... Which is hard to know what's going to happen. You hear as well that uh, people don't, even some of the mechanics, they just want to take on the simple work. Yeah. So don't want to do timer belts, don't want to do difficult brake jobs or suspension jobs or or anything that's going to hold up, you know. Yeah, uh, take uh, up a ramp space for uh, more than a couple of hours. T- totally. So it's... Uh, it's a shame. It is a shame. But um, anyway, how do we get there? How do we get talking about um, that? We're talking about uh, shows coming up. Well, I'm going to the Classic Car Show in November. And yes, you well. Gary's not here, but he's going with me for that. But we'll, be, we'll hopefully have a few pods between um, now and then. And then I'm doing, uh, of course, doing the Goodwood Festival of Speed next year. That's going to be... I know there's um, JKC. I did see something popping up in one of the things. There's a few wee things popping about <coughs> uh, over the next... Um, over the next few while, keep an eye on the event section on RMS as well. We'll try and uh, keep that up to date as usual. But uh, yeah, there's a few things happening. But uh, certainly, uh, there's actually this week. It'll probably be the same day when this podca- podcast go out, goes out. But there's Rich Hill Tire Safety Centre are doing a a wee charity car show Thursday the twenty fourth of August. So uh, probably too late by the time you're listening to it. You're right, it's over. Um, uh, JPCC and I are doing their back to school event. Um, they do that in uh, at Killer School in Donaghadee. I was at it a couple of years ago. Was that it last year? It's good. 
Yeah, I, good stuff. A good stuff. Just different, different stuff you don't see. Stuff the, that you don't see at the regular shows. Yep. Yeah. Or if you're regular to their shows, you might see it. But for yeah. me, no, and that's what I like about their event. Yeah. Um, JKC are doing an event uh, 3rd of September, and then Deutsch Deutsch Collect is 23rd, Saturday the 23rd. So there's a bit yet. The summer's not over. Summer's definitely not over. There's there's plenty to be. be. And and actually, I I hope, you know, again, Rennes was talking. um, He wants to get out for a couple of drives. He's going for surgery now and, and... Start of October, um, so he wants to get out for a few drives and mm-hmm. stuff like that. The sense before that, before he goes in for that, there because he's going to be off the road for a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, back to just getting out for a drive with mm-hmm. your mates. It's hard to beat it. Hard to beat. I don't know. The next thing I'm going to uh, be out, out at the Lotus, apart from maybe maybe Blackwater if I can squeeze it in, mm-hmm. maybe uh, the GTI and I thing down at Scarva House as well. But it really depends on. Um, What's happening? It's a shame here. I'm looking at the Amir sitting there behind you and sitting on the, on the trickle charger, it's just doing nothing. But it looks so good sitting there doing nothing. It does look very good sitting there, but without a doubt, I'll just sit and look at it later it, on. It, it's one of those cars that, that it is, it's that kind of poster car that looks as good sitting there with a white background behind it as it does being caned around the track. Do you know if someone was taking photos of my C63 uh, in Belfast on Was this one of these Saturday? wee dudes on the... <laughs> Aye. Yeah, with a red coat on. Oh, <laughs> one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a, a an issue about the uh, about the app I was using at the time because I was trying to use it. But anyway, so we'll we'll see if uh, well if 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 I was using that just park app and I put in I've got a few registrations which are very similar to each other mm-hmm. and I put the wrong registration in um, and because I was able to email them and say look I had to pay for parking yeah. You'll see in my account. You picked the wrong one. I picked the wrong one, so they just waved it. Which is great. Which is cool. Yeah, because... Uh, but yeah, I know it's... Um, Although the, the, the only thing I know, we, we talk about it all the time, and it's such a fucking pain in the ass. And yes, we're all prepared, and we know it's happening, but see, MOTs again. Still a nightmare. And January is the first appointment I can get for my X5, which is out of MOT for... It's off the road at the minute. It's out of MOT for two weeks. So because it's out of MOT... Can't tax it. Yeah. Because I need to obviously have a test certificate. Yep. And January is the first time and see trying to get through that shite system for cancellations. So I'm just going to bite the bullet again. There's that crowd we've talked about before, that MOT hub. Have mm-hmm. you used them? Have you? No, but I've heard about that. Brilliant. Day. Absolutely fantastic. As long as you've got a book and reference, mm-hmm. you pay pal them eight quid, you tell them when you want your date and what centre, mm-hmm. and whatever kind of auction sniper, whatever thing they have that's basically waiting for appointments mm-hmm. it gets you within a couple of days so I just have to get my finger out of my backside and spend eight quid and get a, a, an appointment but, but again it's just it's the hassle of it you know we're all paying road tax we're all paying this and the other yeah. why can we not get an MOT appointment with any sort of reasonable it's mad yeah it's mad my missus got her uh, through the thing through in the post to say look your car's due for MOT now at the end of next month or sorry yeah end of next month so she's obviously a bit, lot better prepared than I am. So mm-hmm. she's straight on the computer. Yeah, February before she can get a date. Oh, a joke. You just and then what you have to do? You can get the date, and then you're on every morning. Every morning, click, 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 clicking and refreshing. And look, it can be done, but I have neither the time nor the patience to do it. I'd be in the arse. Mm-hmm. Absolute nightmare. So yeah. they, they, so the van's getting driven plenty at the minute, and so is the M3. So I don't mind too much. I, uh, I don't even know when they. Uh, I think. The Merc came with nearly years. Ago. That's that's a great thing about buying a car from England, right? Yeah. So you're buying a car from England, and they they have a workshop. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I remember uh, so when I put the GT4, and uh, the guys like, oh yeah, I work in industrial unit, and my mate runs the place next door. So I'll yeah. I'll get it MT <clears throat> in the morning. You're picking it up, and mm-hmm. it wasn't like I need to book it. He's like, I land it round to him, and he'll MOT it. That's. I do believe the sooner it becomes privatised over here, the better. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Do we think the uh, honourable uh, motor trade in Northern Ireland won't uh, abuse such a system? I don't care. Do you know what? You're right. Because, and, and that, because the government is making an absolute balls of it. Yep. Uh, that's as simple as it is. The, the, the whole system is quite corrupt anyway. You know, it really and truly is. The, the, the whole hassle of it, the whole you must get it done on the government test facility, you must get X, Y, and Z done. 
Look, I, I do like some factor. I like the fact that it's an attempt to be fair and equitable rather than being uh, subjective. Mm-hmm. You know, okay, it's not supposed to be subjective, but, but that uh, they're separately trained. All the equipment's exactly the same, even though it's supposed to be exactly the same yep. in all the MOT centres in England and all the rest. But you're bound to get a much wider variation in, uh, you look at the whole, you had a hole in the hedge versus a, a mm-hmm. big outfit, whereas an MOT centre, it is, it's oh, the same it's, thing. Yeah. And you're not paying the same person to do the work that the MOT test throws up. Correct. So there's no ulterior motive to absolutely yeah. shaft you. Yep. Or otherwise, flip and just give you a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. You know, so. But it's not working at the moment, so it doesn't matter what I think. No. If, if it's not working, it's not working. And it's, uh, I don't know what they're going to do. But that's not a very happy note to finish yeah. on, well, Ross. Not, we're, we're not finishing. Grum, grum, grumpy, <laughs> gr- uh, flipping, uh, grumpy old men can't get their flipping uh, MOT tests done. Maybe they should just raise it to six or seven years. There'll be no help to you. And you need to raise it to flipping <laughs> 30 years to cover the, uh, um, cover the M3. But I don't know. Look, it is what it is, and and you know it's like everything. I just have to have to have to get suck on it up, and have to it. suck it up, and get on with it. Like quit crying about it, like insurance. <coughs> to talk about insurance, the last podcast that it was in, in uh, we're insuring the IPS or something. Like that. The price of insurance was frightening. I had uh, obviously with the X five because uh, it's out of manufacturer warranty, so mm-hmm. you've got the option of of extend the warranties. Mm-hmm. And again, it's a glorified insurance, so it's seven hundred and fifty two pounds for the year. And I, yep. So I phoned them up and I said, "Look, I'm happy mm-hmm. with what I had last year, but I've had no claims. I've had nothing else put in. Mm-hmm. Surely there has to be some room for manoeuvring here." Mm-hmm. And they were very much. Computer says no. We've got three bands. There's zero to sixty thousand miles. Mm-hmm. There's sixty to a hundred thousand miles, and then there's a hundred thousand miles plus. And, and that's, it. that's it. And I said, "Okay, what if I put in a claim?" And he goes, it "Doesn't matter. You've got zero to sixty thousand miles, sixty to hundred or hundred plus." Because and right, you're gonna laugh. This is how, this is how. <laughs> in the X fives, some of them have had a problem with. So the the fuel the fuel cap, mm-hmm. you have to push it to open. Just mm-hmm. like a wee spring loaded thing in it. Mm-hmm. When I was heading off on holidays, the night before I was heading off on holidays, I was going to fill up the car to make sure that okay, we don't have to stop. There's no more stress or pressure. And my fuel cap wouldn't open up. Oh shit! So locked the car, unlocked it, pushed it, pulled it. Nothing else was happening. So in the end, I was kind of being a wee bit rough and bossed it, and pulled out a knife and jammed it in, popped open the mm-hmm. the lock, and then of course the wee pushy, springy loaded thing mm-hmm. has disappeared down, and the, the wee fuckers rattling around inside it. So I can see I can probably have to strip the whole thing back, pull it out, but again I can't be arsed doing it. I'm sitting going. I've got warranty on this here. <laughs> Will I just leave this in BMW and tell you to fix it? You'll, you'll not now after... Uh... I'll not now. <laughs> Although I'm definitely paying the warranty because one of the things, the only, the only claim that had to happen in my car in, in the first three years of ownership, so my X5 has got those laser lights, mm-hmm. which are amazing. Mm-hmm. Like I've, they're high beam and it, it cuts out... High beam, common. cuts out sections, yeah, moves amazing. up, lights yeah, up yeah. ditches. It, it's just so cool, but... Amazing for dogging, so, <laughs> as you told me earlier on. Yeah, it, it really are. <laughs> but one of them was steamed up. and uh, From the dog. <laughs> from, the, all the, from the, all the dogging. <laughs> but because they're LEDs, so there's no heat with them, mm-hmm. so the, the lights don't dry themselves out, so I had to have it replaced under warranty. Mm-hmm. How much do you think a headlight was from BMW for the X5? Oh, I can imagine six, seven, eight hundred pound, a thousand pound, yeah, more. Yeah. More. More the bill for them to replace one headlight, one laser headlight uh-huh. in Bavarian BMW with the manufacturer support and whatever else was two thousand five hundred and eighty pounds. Oh my god! For one headlight, that's ridiculous. So when they came back to me to say, "Okay, listen, do you want to take extended warranty?" I was mm-hmm. like, "Fuck yes!" That's mad. Two and a half grand for one headlight that was steaming up. Yeah, that's mad. And then because of, again, all the tricks that you would do that we would have done, you know, stick a hairdryer into it, pull off the the light cap. They're all sealed LED Seal, units. Sealed unit, you can't do that. Can do nothing with it. Nuts. That's mad. But again, it's all down to where these the the Ricky Boar driving boy who's going to go and become a mechanic. Aye. This way, could end up making money. Aye. Well, that's it. You need a some a service, a reconditioning service online. You send me your light over, and we'll we'll, yeah. we'll rebuild it and put fresh glass into it or new LEDs or I don't know what yeah. the hell they can do but no insurance is, uh, I did see a few guys in RMS talking about the fact that insurance has gone up year on year by 8, 10, 12% yeah 
Yeah. Oh, more, more. With uh, no claims, no nothing. It's yeah. just going the wrong way. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that was very good about the GT4. I think the, the warranty on it was. Yeah, I'm I'm too miserable. I didn't take the warranty <laughs> anyway. But like uh, the car was faultless anyway. But it was was it five or six hundred pound for the year for GT4 or eleven hundred pound for two years. I thought wow. which was which was that's uh, great, incredible. Yeah. Now you have to go if you don't have an existing warranty or you, you know the car was out of warranty when I bought it anyway. But you have to go and get like a two hundred and fifty yeah uh, point flipping check. Let them go check it and say, okay, yeah, your car's good enough for us to put warranty on it. Does it have Porsche flipping, Porsche branded tar or stamped Michelin's on it? Does it have a Porsche battery? Does it have, you know, does, wow. it, does it have Porsche on the Bosch wipers type thing? But provided you have that, you get your, your yeah. and that, and that's actually a, uh, an amazing thing about, uh, you can get that type of warranty on a GT3 as well. So I think it's slightly more, but it's still, yeah. it's not. But it, yeah, it's, it's not something like horrendous. Yeah. But, um, Warranty's a tricky one, isn't it? It's hard to know, especially a uh, third-party warranty. So the C63, I bought it. It came with an AA. Has it AA do some yep. sort of warranty? So they give us a six-month warranty with that. I have no idea if that is amazing or terrible or, you know, is, you know, could you claim for an X, Y, and Z on it? What does yeah. it cover, not cover? How much is the excess? You know, I have, and I have probably people thinking, well, you should have checked. But well, actually, you're talking about the AA. That was actually one of the things with the M3. I bought the AA membership mm-hmm. because it was just of the opinion that you know I'm out in a 20 year old car, and if something happens, it's always going to be easier to get it trailered. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. because I've been with the AA for a few years now and haven't put in claims out there, they give me multi. Let me get this right. I think it's like multi car cover. So anything I'm in mm-hmm. doesn't even have to be the the M3. Mm-hmm. It can be the van. It can mm-hmm. be the X5, mm-hmm. or I'm a passenger and mm-hmm. can be used. Interesting. Mm-hmm. You might be a if I break down someday. I say, I'll say, you're a passenger. <laughs> yeah, you're a passenger here, and you had to go home. <laughs> uh, that's uh, obviously we're being uh, ludicrous because that would be obviously clearly fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> was, we're, we're not laughing, but we're not laughing at you, Boydie. But it was one of the guys called him out on RMS because I think Boydie was the same. He said, "Look, I've been a member of." AA or RAC or whatever it was for years and his car was in limp mode mm-hmm. and he was like and basically the fuckers wouldn't come and pick the car up and take it down whatever else mm-hmm. and one of the guys in RMS and we well, not going on last week about the fact that you have it run on stage two and a half and you were a quarter mile in like less than nine seconds yeah exactly you know like uh, flip by I uh, so uh, it was maybe slightly self but say at the same time if you have a membership or something it shouldn't matter which it shouldn't matter I, I, I do agree with that there you know, so well, that's a difficult thing with factory warranty. Uh-huh. And if we want to modify the car or stuff like that, then it gets. We've had this discussion before where you you had slow mode uh, reintroduced to your X five into the X five because yeah, when, when that 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 Matt Armstrong racing one really did scare me, uh, where the fact that they can you know no matter what anybody says, oh you can hide your map, you can do X Y and Z. If they want to find it, they'll find it, and if they want to cut any warranty claims, they're going to dig deep enough for it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's going to be a difficult thing too. Like even with declining uh, mechanics, mm-hmm. even ordinary stuff. But I'm sure the the dealers are going to they're going to have to pay through the nose for tax, or mm-hmm. they're not going to have enough tax, and they're going to have a problem yep. with servicing their existing fleet. I think they're probably going to have both of those issues. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, some it, crack, is, it is what it is. <laughs> some that's what. Frank, Andy, we started off being all happy about track days and friends and everything else, and now we're talking like. As you said, two grumpy old men must bitching be, about must, MOTs. Must and be this Burra Moretti I'm having. Must be. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you one good thing to end up. So I was doing a lot of driving today. Um, I was all around the place, up the Antrim coast, then across by Ballymena. That new motorway mm-hmm. from the, the new stretch of motorway to Derry, Stoke, Stoke Londonderry, mm-hmm. it is such a gift. That's a great job. It's, it's great. It doesn't take a lot of mileage out of what you're doing, but see, just just the ease of driving like I said I was up there and back down and it really is you know that motorway driving but it, it, it's open but then there's something going on at the minute where they've got I think the last maybe five or six miles of it down to single lane still I, I, I is that I you were up there the other day as well yeah they had that um, coming home did they have that going uh, both ways both, both yeah. directions in fairness I was up but I wasn't driving as a passenger so I was only paying half the attention but I was thinking this is a yeah. this is a great road but uh, yeah so it's about what you have dual carriage. You coming out of Belfast. You have dual carriage way the whole way to Castle Dawson roundabout. Yep. Then you have about twenty minutes of uh, 
Glen Chain Pass, Pont, mm-hmm. Pont de Rosa, etc. And then you're on the carriageway again for, carriageway. for what, 40 minutes? Yeah. 45 minutes? Which is great. And I said we were making good time coming up, but then I said down in the signal file, and then there was a line of cars stuck behind the lorry doing oh. 52 mile an hour. Uh, grim. But hey, grim, it but is what it is. But the, the road was fantastic, and then only had only had so much um, so that's a tractor that's a tractor going past yeah. only had so much stuff I was for taking the N3 out today yeah. but I had far too many products to take and deliver and do everything else so mm-hmm. out in the V8 van V8 van what noises can it, it can do V8 yeah so I think the one we have a sitting at the minute is like um, a V8 it's got the Subaru kind dump of valve boxer tar- engine so it has does it do dump valve sounds no no <laughs> oh, it needs to do dump valve needs sounds to, that would be amazing do you remember who was the dude do you remember an RMS years ago and he was doing diesel dump valves can you remember what was his name diesel dump they died a death they died a death not that we want to bring it back no not but, but even but petrol dump valves have died a death yeah. they're all recirculating they, they, are, they are there but they're yeah but they're, they're, they're all quiet and mm-hmm. they're, they're not making noise I think uh, I see a lot of people complain at the minute that uh, they were talking about you know, the ULES cameras over in London, but now they're bringing out noise cameras uh-huh. for, um, I think, specifically to target the M140 drivers who are popping and banging and farting all the way up and down the road. Per M140 drivers. Per M140s. Although, do you hear them? Like, it, there does seem to be, like, you can put on a map and... I quite like it. I really do quite like it. But uh, there's some guys, there, there's somebody who lives down past me, and, oh, what the fuck, every time you hear him going past, it's like... He drives and eases off and drives and eases off. And it used to be the dove, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they're literally driving, whoa, pop, 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 you know, and it really is like machine guns going off now. Give me a, a super twin turbo with Ooh. an HKS super, super sequential going. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, that's, 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 that's the noise you want to hear. Yeah, that just, that noise is fantastic. Yeah, but not, not this other. No, not this. Shit. Because again, you know, you're laughing at me with the van, but a lot out there is manufactured sounds by the, but things and, and you were saying as well, you're talking about the GT3 RS, isn't that there mm-hmm. at, at Bishop's Court that day? And you were saying, I bet you they sound great inside. Yeah. Because it's all, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's the, all tuned for the, the inside. Acoustic tuning. Acoustics are coming through your speakers. Yeah, through the speakers or it's uh, induction noise piped through. And that was actually a thing. I remember when the GT86 came out, uh, one of the things that Toyota said that they did was they, they put a pipe an acoustic pipe in through the fa- through the firewall, so you could get a bit of induction roar. Wow! Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't it was wasn't artificial, but it was there to make it sound a bit more to sporty sound, yeah. inside the cabin without it making without it yeah. noisy outside. You know, I'm sure this is GT4 RS. I am busting for apparently your ears nearly bleed. The th- just cause you have the, yeah yeah the uh, behind the B pillar induction yeah. pipes just straight straight behind your. It neck. must be awesome. It must be class. Nine thousand RPM. Class. You see, we, we can be positive. We can be. We can be. And now, now I'm sitting thinking about, that's actually the one thing I miss from change, from putting decap pipes in the E46 is I have the Venturi up at the front of it yep. and the induction noise sounded the immense. Board. So it did. wasn't as good as CSL with a full carbon intake, but yeah. it sounded really close. Yeah. But now with the decats, it's kind of, you have to be really gunning it to, to hear it. But So my Exige, uh, which has sort of the same engine as my... Uh, Amira had I got a big induction kit on it yeah. and the supercharger wine it just was like <laughs> it was amazing lovely yeah so if I can get something similar I don't think much hasn't been released for, for my career but if I can get something similar I would definitely do it because it, oh, yeah. it just adds to the whole it, it just experience. adds all to the, the the experience that's actually the key word for it is the experience yeah yeah. Oh, well, like, like let, let's face it putting an induction kit on it's not going to liberate a lot of unless you have a really convoluted uh, intake system or something like that it's like Ken and filter back in the day. It's not going to give you much power. No. But if it gives you that wee bit of uh, hairs in the back of your neck. Yeah, I, my, my first job I ever had was um, up in Sea Truck Ferries at one point, And I had, it was a Vauxhall. This after. week in Sea Truck, we're dipping. <laughs> insert, uh, well, actually, that was the coolest thing we were all bringing in. At that stage, that was the real Jap import. So all the, car, all the really awesome cars were coming mm-hmm. in and we got to take them off the boats and have a mm-hmm. bit of fun. Yeah, I remember you saying last time. We were time, saying yeah. that there. But there was me and one of my friends, Kevin. So Kevin had a Citroen Saxo West Coast, the 1.1. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, it was a Vauxhall. Astra G, which was a 1.68 valve. With the pictures of it in RMS from yeah. last, the last podcast. It's, <laughs> so it's, that was the, it's, that was the a, eight valve. A stunner. And uh, I can remember like literally doing night shift, me and him, and going out and putting in Ken and, <laughs> Ken and induction kits. And that <laughs> fucking, that's what we did. That's what we did. And um, what was the odd math thing we were doing? It was like, 
it was something used to spray in the can and it was like almost putting like easy start or something into it uh-huh. and Kev was convinced that this was giving him like an extra 10 horsepower and everything <laughs> but it was just that's like funny a shit. red X petrol additive and all yeah. that for the carry on yeah, yeah, which will be a flyer then but that was the, like again remnant like that was that was the funny stuff we used to do back in the day and, and convincing yourself convincing yourself beyond hope that, that your 1.1 <laughs> 60 horsepower like, car was going to get 10 more horsepower <laughs> more than often than not the car you have is the car you, you know is is like you just love it it's the best it's the best for you at that yeah. time and no one will talk you out of absolutely you know, not you know so you could have come and asked me what my Lotus is like I'm not going to tell you it's crap no now you have to bear that in mind if you're thinking of buying something someone has spent a lot of money and uh, loves their car and all the rest they're probably not going to badmouth that much. No. <laughs> you know. But that's where fo- back to forums, that's where forums are good, especially yes. owners' forums where they can talk to you about, yeah, Yeah, look, they are great, but this thing here really annoys me about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, totally. One other thing as well, we're talking about cars. Did you see um, that dude, Slick Cell, uh-huh. his dream car giveaways have got his 360? Yes, I saw that. Have you entered for it? No, I haven't. But I, I have. <laughs> but I, it looks absolutely, uh, it's a it's a Stradale uh, replica. Uh, replica or homage they were, or whatever they, you they call they were, it. They were very complimentary about um, about everything, about how it drived, how it, or how it drove, how it sounded, everything on it. So, um, yeah, for the sake of a tenner for a ticket, I'm definitely going in for it. Yeah, I think uh, Pablo was messaging, uh, <laughs> says, I think I've bought a ticket or three for that. Yeah, a ticket or three. A stream car, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was such a beautiful car. What a project. What a cool project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unreal. I, th- I think on that note, we're gonna, we, we need to get Gary back, at least. We may need to get a guest. We're, we're badly organised. We will do this now and again. We talk shit anyway. But. But hey, may until, as well be good at something. Until, <laughs> just not this. <laughs> until uh, next time. Like and su- subscribe. God knows why you would. Follow everything at RMS Motoring. And remember, there's no warranty. This was uh, sold as seen.